Gosh, it's like, it's 73, it is 73 degrees outside. I'm so happy, look at Bruce, he's so happy too. All I can think about is Ferris Bueller. How can I be expected to work on a day like today? So today, uh, I am told that there's a package I need to go get. I asked if there was something alive in it and I didn't get a straightforward response. So uh, it's been at the UPS store for a couple days now, so I'm gonna go get it. I was gonna change shoes before I left and I forgot, so now I'm wearing Crocs in public. Something Jenny just loves. All right, let's see what all this is about. I bought a shirt from Big Lou. He texted me the other night and told me he put something else in the bag. Well, it smells like he put something in here. First off, here's the Big Lou shirt. It smells like barbecue. I don't know if every shirt will smell like barbecue, but I'm glad mine does. <laughs> Alright, he wrote me a letter. He says, your packaging may be prettier, but mine tastes better. Here's a little barbecue between buds on top of your supply. See you guys at Workbench Con. Thanks, Big Lou. Man. Oh, man. If you have not tried his rub, it is out of this world. He's worked on it basically his whole life. He knows what he's doing. Thanks, Big Lou. That means a lot. I'm glad I came to go pick this up. I just pulled out of the UPS store and I saw this car that looked like one of our friends from church and so I waved and as she drove by I found out it was not my friend from church, it was some other elderly lady. Um, but she waved back, so I don't know, new friend? I also got in the mail this, a Uline catalog for holiday packaging stuff. They got all sorts of great stuff. If you've got a business, you need to be worrying about holiday season now. Yes, I know it's September. I know that like not even Hobby Lobby has Christmas stuff out yet, but if you're not preparing for the holiday season, you're not really serious about making sales during that time. We did a super deep dive on this in the stud stack last week, but you gotta, you gotta be ready for the holiday season. Jenny's already strategizing and calling people and getting Christmas orders and all sorts of stuff. So take advantage of it now before everybody else figures out, would you be quiet? Get all your stuff figured out now so that you can start executing while everybody else is getting their stuff together. Bruce. I've lied to you several times this week, telling you that we were gonna go for a run or that we were gonna go on a scoot or do something adventurous or fun, maybe go to the dog park, but it's just been too hot, I've been too busy, I've been making excuses. Bruce, today's your day. What do you wanna do? Look at this needy, needy dog. All right, well, I think we're gonna go to the park. There's a really big park, um, it's kind of far away, but um, there's a really big park, got a lot of trails. I'm gonna bring a scooter, I'm gonna try to go for a run. There's a little, like, I don't know, you, you'll see. I've been looking at this day on the little, you know, seven day outlook or whatever for like a week now, and I've just been so excited. I'm so happy that it's finally cooled off. So we're gonna take advantage of it. All right, Bruce, you ready? Oops, I forgot. I have to check for orders. I know I'm taking the day off, but I gotta check for orders at least once today. All right, false alarm, we're good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
tons of little walking trails and stuff like that. Bruce really likes it. There's lots of new things to smell and sniff around at. You know, I'd love to be able to ride my scooter to a park like this. I mean, my scooter would be way out of range by the time that we could get to a park like this. But I mean, like, conceptually, Houston is just notoriously terrible at bike lanes and walking routes and stuff like that. I mean, I understand not everybody enjoys the outdoors like Jenny and I do and Bruce here. But, you know, certain places that we've lived have really spoiled us into enjoying, you know, like parks and bike lanes and sidewalks and a walkable community. I guess that's what I'm really after is that there's not very many walkable communities in Houston. Now, a lot of that has to do with the low tax rate, right? People don't want to pay taxes here. It's a pretty conservative state. And so the trade-off there is that there's not enough money left over to fund things like sidewalks and bike lanes and stuff like that. I did some research on this back when we first moved here and uh, what I found out was that in most places it's not the government's job to pave and maintain the sidewalks. It's whoever owns the land. Now the government, they'll do intersections, they'll do you know the handicap crosswalks and stuff like that, but they won't do the sidewalks leading up to them. And that's not to say that there's not walkable communities in Houston. There definitely are. It's just that most of them are either privatized and you know the, the subdivision pays for the park and the sidewalks and everything else and you pay them when you buy your house there or they're in really expensive areas of the city like the Heights or River Oaks or places like that. I don't know. I'm not going anywhere with this. I guess if I'm going to land the plane, uh, let me just say that it's my opinion that we all appreciate parks and sidewalks and just being able to walk in a community and I, I don't know. I just don't get that feeling here. It's a very, very different feeling from other places that we've lived just because it's just impossible to walk. And then that's a catch-22 because then if nobody walks, everybody drives. And if everybody drives, you don't feel comfortable walking. So even if they had the bike lanes, you know, we'd have a Casey Neistat situation where you, the bike lanes wouldn't even work because the cars are in them. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Do you use sidewalks? Do you walk places? Would you walk more places if you had more sidewalks? Do you live in a place where there's a good walking community? I'd love to hear that down in the comments below. Check this out. I saw this just driving by. I just saw that spider web like glint in the sunlight. It was really cool. I think it's some sort of citrus spider. I don't know. I've definitely looked that guy up before. Bruce, are you having fun? Huh? Are you having fun? Did you enjoy this? Oh, dog breath. I always feel bad on days off like this. I mean, I'm not stupid enough to think that I can never take a day off. Um, I have lived through burnout multiple times in my life. That is not something that I enjoy. I don't ever want to get back there again, but like, I don't know, Matt Cremona was talking about this one day and he was saying that he just had to accept the fact that no matter how much you do in a day, you'll never be happy with how much you've done. And man, can I relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of you can too. If you don't know, in the last couple of years on social media, there's this thing being propagated called hustle culture, which basically just means work your face off every single day. And I just don't think that's the right way to think about it because yes, there's chapters in your life. You're gonna just have to grind it out. You're just gonna have to suck it up and take care of business and move forward. You can't do that sustainably. And if that's your business model, you're not gonna succeed. That's why YouTubers, like, they grind, 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 then they get bored of it and YouTube puts rewarding them for stopping the grind. There's other YouTubers and business owners out there that have found a very sustainable way to put out a large amount of content. And 
I guess that's sort of where we're going, or where we're trying to go anyway. Anyway, so I feel guilty that I'm taking the day off and I'm not making cutting boards, but I also know that I'm gonna be way more productive if I take one day off a week. Guys, I've worked 80 and 90 hour work weeks before. They're nasty, don't do, I do not recommend it for a long period of time. Let me use the whiteboard, maybe that'll help. Um, this is the ugly side of the studio, so. Go to sleep, go to sleep. Let's say that you're, you are a cell phone. Well, just, it's a metaphor, we'll stick with it. That's a cell phone. And this is your energy level. The battery level of this cell phone is your energy level, right? You recharge it every night or every other night and you have a fresh, full pot of energy every single day or near about, right? Let's say you do a task throughout the day. Let's say you go to work and by the time you come home for work, a lot of your energy is wiped. So you are maybe at like 60%. And basically, you're just gonna keep lowering your battery until you get a day off or you get an afternoon off to recharge. But sometimes, let's say you've got a side hustle or you're working on a business or something like that. Sometimes, in order to make it all the way through the week, you have to plug into an external battery source. This battery is called your grit. So anytime that you can't take a day off to recharge, but you still need more energy, you dig deep and you say, I'll just get it done. I'll grind it out. I'll, I'll hustle harder. And you tap into this grit battery. Well, that's great until your grit battery is empty. This is called burnout. You're emotionally tired, you're frustrated, you don't understand what's going on, and more and more and more is being asked of you. Then your regular energy battery is really low, maybe like 10%. And if you don't take a day off soon, everything is gonna start collapsing around you. What Jenny and I have learned is that these two batteries recharge in different ways. Your default energy level is recharged by time off. That's like a weekend, that's an afternoon, that's a night out with the boys, whatever that is for you, that's how you recharge your day-to-day -day energy level. But how you recharge your grit battery, that is with a vacation or some sort of really big grandiose recharger. They don't come along very often. So you can take days off, you can rest, you can sleep, you can go eat good quality food. If you eat healthier food, you will feel better. And then you can go work out and that will recharge your daily battery. But every so often, you need to have a grit recharge something that re-excites you about what it is that you're doing, what you're working towards. So your grit battery is recharged by big events, a new goal, a new opportunity, conventions, uh, community, that's a huge one. That all goes to recharge your grit battery. Quick plug for the stud stack. Like, the stud stack is a place you can go to recharge your grit battery because you see other people winning and you're like, wow, I don't want to miss out on that. Or somebody just pats you on the back and says, hey, it's supposed to be tough. Anyway, so I hope this helps you understand why sometimes you can just grind it out, but if you get to the end of your backup battery, it all starts to fall apart because you gotta do two separate things to recharge. Sometimes you're out of grit, but you got plenty of energy. Sometimes you just lose hope. Sometimes you lose sight of why you're doing what you're doing, and that's because and that's because your grit battery is empty. There's some days you're really excited about your future business, but you're just tired because you didn't get a good night of sleep or you ate junk food. Maybe it's been a while since you took a break you're still excited about it, and that's where you can get in some trouble too, because if you're only using your grit battery and you're not recharging your daily energy battery, your grit battery is gonna get drained really fast. I don't know, was that clear enough or did I just confuse most of you? At least that's how I mentally understand it, but again, I'm a little crazy.